A viewer recently asked me if I ever wear disguises when I do private investigation work. Hi, Larry K, ShadowAnyone.com, and the creator of the Investigator's Ultimate Guide series, Premium Private Investigator Training, from someone who's been there and done that. The short and a little bit embarrassing answer to the question is, yes, I do sometimes wear disguises when I'm doing private investigation work. Now, why is this a little bit embarrassing? Because I have a lot of my brother and sister PIs out there, licensed professionals in the industry, who may roll their eyes and think, oh my goodness, you know, I never do that. Well, sometimes taking it to that next notch is what it takes to solve a case or do something that other people are, are not doing well or maybe they're failing at. Let me give you two examples of when I wear disguises uh, doing uh, PI work. Number one is when I'm doing pre-surveillance work and specifically the recognizance of going into the area. A lot of private investigators do not do this with a disguise or without a disguise. They just roll their eyes and think of it as a waste of time. But I'm telling you, it's one of those things that can notch your success rate up and really pays off. Go out 24, 48 hours ahead of time and drive through and look at the area. Now you, you're going to use your online sources and maps and things like that to pick your you know, perfect spot or your secondary spot to set up. But when you get out there, you're going to discover wait a minute, there's a neighbor parks a large SUV and it blocks my view from my quote-unquote perfect spot that I found online. Or there's tree branches that hang down or foliage or bushes that have grown up there. If you're going out to set up for surveillance and in that moment you don't want to discover that your quote-unquote perfect spot is not that great and have to scurry around to find someplace else. You want that all arranged so when you arrive for surveillance you can slip right into the spot that you want and set up very discreetly. Now what I'll do disguise wise for that is I always drive a different vehicle that I'm going to use on surveillance. So for example if I'm going to bring my van out and do the surveillance then I drive a car out there to do the recognizance, that pre-surveillance work. Additionally, and here's a bit of the disguise, I will wear uh, sometimes like a floppy hat and big sunglasses and maybe a, a jacket that I don't normally wear or wear any other time like a tow truck driver's jacket. So the pre-surveillance drive, this would be, if anyone notices anything, this would be the most suspicious part, right? That you're driving by two, maybe three times, you're in an area, that might get someone's attention and they might notice or remember in the back of their mind, oh, there was a, you know, a green car, and a white guy with a floppy hat and big sunglasses. Well, when I come back a, a day or two later, I'm going to be looking just like I normally look. I'm going to be in a van and probably I'm not even going to come as close to the subject's, say, residence as I do during a pre-surveillance. So I'm going to park that van, get in the back quickly and discreetly to do my surveillance. There's not going to be any correlation, oh, you know, this guy was out here a couple days ago and now he's back. You're not going to get that at all because of the different vehicle and a different look. Now the other time uh, that I will wear a quote-unquote disguise when I'm working is when I'm process serving and specifically on the pretext work, on these, these cases where I have to uh, use a pretext to trick the person into taking service of process. They're refusing, they're hiding, whatever it might be. So yes, in those circumstances I will wear, for example, if I'm posing as a construction worker or someone who's painting lines in the road, I will wear a reflective vest and a hard hat, maybe be carrying a clipboard, and I want to, that's sort of a disguise. I want to project the, the, to the person that I am a construction worker, that I'm exactly what I say I am. Now, it's a little bit silly in a sense. Why, if I'm painting uh, the lines on the road, would I be wearing a hard hat? But it's not so much the reality, but what people expect. If I say that I'm a construction worker or doing that type of work, and I've got a hard hat, that fits what people think. They're not thinking logically about why would a, a guy painting lines wear a hard hat. So, yes, that's the type of thing where I'll use a disguise, if you will. To, uh, to get the job done for process serving specifically. Here's a key thing to take away though, whether you quote unquote use disguises or not, you're always going to dress appropriately. So sometimes you're gonna be wearing a jacket and a tie when you go out to say do witness interviews, if you're interviewing a doctor maybe, a lawyer, those types of things. Other times a jacket and tie would be completely inappropriate. You don't wanna use that. If you're going into certain neighborhoods, you might just wanna wear a polo shirt, 
sometimes maybe even a t-shirt, maybe even more casual, depending on what you're doing. If, you're, if your idea is that there's a corner to bodego that you're going to go into and try to talk to the cashier casually and that, you may just be wearing a t-shirt and jeans or something like that. You're not really even posing as, you're not even saying that you're an investigator, you're just posing as a customer who's curious about, hey, that thing that happened out here last week I heard about. So dress appropriately to whatever you're trying to do. Remember, that's part of moving you forward. The idea is not for you to dress so that you feel like an investigator, so that uh, your family and friends know that uh, this is what I do and it's I'm you know a, a special person because of it. You you dress according to what's going to get you the results you need for your case and your client. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. I'm happy to answer them for you by email or maybe even in a video one week. This is Larry Case, ShadowAnyone.com. Remember, do the right thing, even if it's the hard thing.